slipped in here since we started tonight. Can I just say again, we're feeling good and we're feeling right. It's Saturday night. Woo! Yes. I'm just a little excited, you know. Been looking forward to this all week, I got to tell you. So let me say again, thank you guys for your giving. You know, if you're just new to the haven, don't really know what's going on, we don't either. We're just following the Lord. We're trusting him. One of the things I will tell you is we have never, nor will we ever pass an offering plate. We just don't do it. I don't want you to feel pressured. I don't want you to feel anything but just love. We just make an opportunity that if God lays it on your heart, there's a giving station in the back corner on the left. There's a card reader up here, and you can also give online. And, you know, those who have been following our journey, it's, a, it's an important thing that everybody realizes we're all carrying a little bit of the weight. And we're all heading somewhere. The vision of this ministry is continuing to grow. I can tell you what, we have mentioned the last couple of weeks that there's some activity. We are definitely looking and, and exploring the options for a, a new home. As you can see, we're kind of outgrowing our space. Got like 40 kids in the back. It's a little tight. So stay tuned. We've got some details coming. I just want to encourage you to be faithful. Listen to the Holy Spirit. That's how we're all going to get to where God wants us to go. And that's where we want to end up. Amen. That's the place. That's the place. Can I just say something? As I was preparing tonight, I was just kind of overwhelmed a little bit. I'm going to actually sit for a minute. I know you can't believe this. Get, get your phones out. Get your phones out. All right, here we go. This is, a, this is the money shot. All right, that's it. That's all I can do. I can't stand it. I can't take it. No, I was just thinking, of, just to share my heart for a second, I, I feel so incredibly blessed to be your pastor. I, I just can't even tell you the, the joy that it brings me to see you guys grow, to, to see you guys respond to the Holy Spirit and the Word. I can't even tell you. You know, it's just a, it's a busy life and it's an active life. But let's, let me just tell you, I'm here for you. Debbie and I are here for you. We are absolutely energized by what the Lord is doing and the Holy Spirit is doing in this community. So I am the chief among you tonight to say, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed to be standing up here, to be your pastor. And I want to start something tonight that might seem a little unusual with, with a particular word heading into a, a message. I want to start with the word, and that word is understatement. Now, according to the dictionary, understatement is a noun that means the act or instance of representing in a weak or restrained way that is not borne out by the facts. Now, just to clarify, because we are going somewhere tonight, let's look at a couple historic understatements. Can we do that? Here's one that I like. The statement was, it was a rather serious evening, you know. That was from one of the survivors of the Titanic. Just a little bit of an understatement, right? Now, i got to say, I love this guy's name, Sir Cosmin Duff Gordon. I like that name, but he has no clue what he just went through. Maybe he was in shock. A rather serious evening. Here's another one that was really a major understatement. We all know this one. Houston, we have a problem. But, but that, that was said when an oxygen tank exploded on Apollo 13. And oh, by the way, they were 200,000 miles above the earth. It's more like, Houston, we're going to die. <laughs> understatement. Here's another one of the epic all-time understatements. The quote is this, hey, this stuff is pretty good. Now, that was the initial reaction from the first person who tried bacon, all right? To that, I go, what? <laughs> but let me give you another understatement as we head into a new series tonight. And that is this, prayer is kind of important. Well, that's a major understatement. And as this unfolds in the weeks to come, this series that we're heading into, I believe you're going to find that prayer is not only important, but prayer is vital, maybe beyond anything else you and I can experience in our relationship with God. Let me give you a few facts to support that. First of all, there are 650 prayers in Scripture. Pray or its variations appear 540 times in Scripture. The Bible records that Jesus prayed 25 different times. Prayer is our lifeline to God, and prayer, as someone said, is the ultimate wireless connection. So in fact, an active prayer life is vitally important. I'm going to pour the foundation upon which we'll build for the next few weeks in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. 
Once Jesus was in a certain place and he was praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples to pray. So I want to take those five words and extract them. And we're going to call this series for the next few weeks, Lord, teach us to pray. Now I believe tonight, if you're a relatively new believer, if you've been recently energized in your Christian experience, feeling motivated to grow in your prayer life, I believe this series can be the catalyst for opening up amazing new dimensions in your Christian experience. I believe that with all my heart. I believe it will revolutionize your relationship with God, not because I'm so awesome in delivering it, but because his word is so powerful and it is anointed and this is his will. Now, if you're a seasoned follower of Christ, you've been in this thing for a long time, I'm hoping these next few weeks will reawaken your passion, your desire, and that your prayer life can become greater, will not be stale or boring or routine. Now, in this series, we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer in coming weeks. We're going to dig into it. We're going to see exactly what was going on and what Christ was saying to us and what it means to us today. We're going to deal with the posture of prayer, you know, to kneel or not to kneel. That is the question. We're going to deal with the topic of fasting. I mean, what's the deal with fasting? We're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about, the, answer the question, do I really have to pray out loud? We're going to talk about that. But, you know, before we deal with how to pray, what to say, tonight I want to deal with what I feel is point number one and the, 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 the blocks on pit which we must build for these coming weeks, and that is the importance of prayer. Now, it's going to be teaching and preaching, but I promise you it won't be boring. I don't know how to do boring. But we are going to learn, and by the grace and help of God, we are all going to grow. Fair enough? Now, I guess I could just put it this way, and I figured I better put this on the screen so we really get it. To put it simply, here's where we must begin. Prayer is communication with God. None of us is exempt. In God's plan, and God's will, none of us can say this is for somebody else. I don't pray. No, 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 no. We're going to see as this unfolds, it is his will for every one of us to have that communication with him. After all, as we just saw, even Jesus did not neglect his relationship with the Father. And communication is essential to build any strong relationship. Hmm. I love the fact that God allows us the opportunity to develop in this area. That we don't except Jesus Christ as Savior, and his expectation is that we're going to have this eloquent communication between us and God. God knows how you're made. Let me just tell you right away. God knows you're an introvert or an extrovert or whatever is in between, maybe a hybrid like me, a little bit of both. But I tell you what, God says within the designs of how he created you, his heart and his desire is still to have communication, and that is done through prayer. See, prayer is what God designed to link us to him. It's an amazing resource. Now, on the subject of prayer as communication, I found a couple of verses that might help illustrate that it is not a, uh, a monologue, one person talking, it is very much a dialogue. So in Psalm 17, 6, the psalmist says these words, I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. And then you can find another place in Scripture where God directly speaks through the prophet Isaiah and God says to each one of us, I have heard your prayer and I've seen your tears. Aren't you glad? God is personal. He says, I have seen your tears. So in this snapshot, if you would, taken out of Scripture, we see that there is a very much a two-way uh, uh, process going on. We talk. And God talks. Now I heard something this week, some of you might have too, that there's a, I guess, relatively popular 
a talk show host, and she claimed that hearing God's voice makes you insane. Hey, count me as crazy, all right? Just sign me up, because I'm crazy. God does talk to us, and I'm so glad he does. And you're going to see that scripture absolutely validates it. It's really out of ignorance, somebody that doesn't understand or know the word of God. And I hope that that person becomes enlightened. But one thing about us is we have to realize he is not only a personal savior. He saved you as an individual, not as a family, not us as a church, but you as an individual. And so it is with his desire to communicate with us. It is very much personal, and it is very much a two-way street. Communication, so important. Think about any relationship that's important to you where communication is not huge. Think about it. Think about it with your spouse, with your kids. Debbie and I do premarital counseling, and we've done it for years on couples that I will marry eventually, and we, we, we spend a lot of time on communication. Why? Because that is often where things can get out of control. Assumptions are made. Things are allowed to build up. But if there is open communication in an interpersonal relationship, it avoids so much. So it is with us and our God, which is in heaven. Think of communication with your children, with coworker, with a best friend. How can you possibly have a best friend when nobody's talking to each other? just not going to develop, especially in the spousal thing. I, I was thinking about when I first met Debbie, my wife. Now, we've been married for a few decades. <laughs> and I remember meeting this beautiful, young Jersey girl. Not just any kind of Jersey girl, but a Puerto Rican princess. <laughs> oh, Yes. And I can say she is still a young, beautiful Jersey girl, my Puerto Rican princess. And I can remember our very first conversation and those early days when we were just meeting each other and kind of walking through this thing, you know, the friendship thing and everything. And when I first met her and began talking to her, I called her Debbie. Everybody called her Debbie. When her mom yelled at her, it was Debbie. Debbie was just the name. That everybody called her. So I fell in line with that. But in the weeks and months that followed, I began to call her Deb. Because I was on the inside now. <laughs> I could have a little nickname now. And then as we began to fall in love, oh, then I called her Babe. <laughs> when it gets real serious. No, I'm not telling you what happens then. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. There are other names, but I'm not sharing it with you tonight. But I think about that evolution, and even in our conversations that, you know, it started out, it was small talk, then it evolved to serious topics. You know, it started, we were both kind of guarded. You know how it is. You got walls up. You should. That's only wisdom. But over time, it becomes more and more open and more and more transparent. And conversation goes from surface to intimate. It is what happens as a relationship grows and it is reflected in communication. So it will be in your relationship with God. How you talk to him in the beginning. It's not necessarily how things will be as you grow closer and as he deals more and more with your heart, draws you closer to him. It is a beautiful evolution of a relationship. That's exactly what it is. I want to emphasize this. The primary motivation for prayer should be relational. We are starting on point one, the importance of prayer. The importance of prayer is not, God, I need you to touch me. God, I need a new job. The importance of prayer in the very basic level is not a request. It is a relationship. Now, for some of us, this is mind-blowing. We were raised, you know, in certain ways that you know, God was austere and God was afar off and kind of intimidating and, and, and all those things that went with it. And, you know, maybe you were brought up in a way that, you know, the prayers were kind of something you recited. And I appreciate devotion and dedication I do with all my heart. But when you begin to have it unfold, that God says, this is a relationship. And point number one, in any relationship, we got to talk. Can we just talk? Can you listen while I talk? It is a beautiful Beautiful characteristic of our God. Let me tell you what else prayer is. Prayer is obedience to God. 
And I pulled just four scriptures that really leave no wiggle room. Romans 12, 12, be faithful in prayer. No real option there. God is saying, yeah, I, I really require you to be faithful in prayer. Pray about everything, it says in Philippians 4, 6. Everything, really, everything? Yeah, everything. Does God really care? I mean, come on. Yeah. Does he care that you, your meter is on E and you don't think you're going to make it? And you just go, God, please. Please don't let me run out of gas. Sometimes we run out anyway. But God cares that we talk to him, communicate with him, pray about everything. Colossians 4, 2, devote or commit or be extra, extra faithful to prayer. It is something that there's a requirement of God. And I love 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray continually. You know what that means? That it means just to have a constant mindset of talking to God. That means that as you Go through your day in those quiet moments. Those are the times to think and talk to him in your mind, in your thoughts. It is a beautiful way to stay connected through the madness and the ups and downs of our day. Now, I heard a missionary several years ago. He shared an account. The country that he was called to had a very different culture when it came to commerce. And he said that when you went to a place of business to purchase something in this part of the world, you didn't deal with the item you came for first. The first thing you dealt with was whoever approached you from the store, whether the owner or his wife or somebody from that community that worked there, the first thing you did was you asked a personal question. Don't try that at Walmart, all right? Don't. This is Jersey. Bad things can happen. Because, for example, they would go up when the man would come. The first thing they would say is, are you married? How's your family? How many kids do you have? Are they going to school? The concept was this. Before we ever do business for what's on the shelf and what you came for that you needed, somebody hear me in the spirit tonight. Somebody hear me on the spiritual level. Before we ever deal with what we need, God says, let us communicate as friends. Let us communicate as those that are walking this life together, that I'm here to help you. I am someone that will hear your cry, knows your heart, and really wants to commune with you. And so in that community, he had to adjust from a Jersey guy that would go in and like, yo, I want the coffee over there. Come on, what's up over here? Forget about it. Instead, he learned to slow down and make the connection. I love that analogy in terms of us and God. And God says, if you'll obey, if you will faithfully pray, then this relationship between you and him will absolutely grow. Here's what else prayer is. Prayer is a privilege. Hebrews 4.16 says, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence <laughs> so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Can you imagine God has made access? The God of the universe invites you to his presence. He opens the door. And scripture says we can go to him in confidence that through Jesus Christ we are accepted. He looks at you and I that have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and he sees his son. And he says, come on in. I worked for a boss one time that was so intimidating. He even really worked hard to make his office a place of intimidation. Anybody ever have a boss like that? This boss had a massive desk. And I'm absolutely sure that he cut the legs a little shorter on all the chairs in front of his desk. I'm sure of it. You know, you'd sit there across and you felt like you were a kid just sitting on the floor. He was peering down at you, condescending. But you know how God's presence is? You know the privilege of prayer? God says, I'm opening my door to the most comfortable place you can imagine. I don't know what comes to mind when I say, well, what's your comfort, comfort spot? Like, you know, I, 
I just picture palm trees somewhere, even in an office. There's got to be palm trees. I picture, you know, just maybe a little bit of the smell of coffee wafting through the air. You know, I'm sitting in a real, real cushy chair. Oh, it's so comfortable. And maybe, just maybe off in the distance I hear, could it be Bob Marley? I think it is. I must be in heaven. But think of that place in your mind. And I'm telling you, God says, this is where you can come with confidence to my presence. Is he almighty? Is he holy? We're going to study that in the Lord's Prayer. Absolutely he is. But his heart is this. I do not call you servants. I call you friends. And a friend just likes to hang out. I enjoy that in my life. God has blessed me with friendships. And sometimes Debbie's like, what are you guys doing all that time? Really not much. We're just hanging out. We're just talking and the conversation meanders and it rolls. Can you imagine the God of the universe says, I am extending that invitation to you? Listen, that is what prayer is at its very basic level. It is God saying, just come talk. And oh, while you're talking, take a breath every now and then and listen. And I'll reveal things to you. And you may not ever hear an audible voice. I never have, but I've felt stirrings in my heart. And I knew it wasn't me. And I felt just things kind of passing through my thoughts that I I knew wasn't me. I knew it was God through the Holy Spirit communicating through my time that I spent with him. Mm. Here's what else prayer is. Prayer is fellowship. (laughs) But I thought prayer was just, you know, beating down the doors of heaven for everything I want and need. There is a time to present our needs to God. But the initial open door and connection needs to be that of fellowship. I love this psalm. I, I don't know... If you're into this, but if you have a phone, this is one you may want to take a picture of. Here's what I felt when I I discovered this psalm this week. I know I've read this before, but I don't ever remember it hitting me like it did this week. But I plan to start every day this week with this as the cry of my heart. And say, my heart, O Lord, has heard you say, come and talk with me. Oh, do you hear him tonight? Do you hear God tonight in your heart saying, "Just, just come talk to me? And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. I will not delay. A couple of weeks ago, I don't know how many of you were here in that service when I mentioned the 30-day prayer challenge to start your day with a moment of prayer. I hope you've been doing it. If not, anytime you start, if you do it for at least 30 days, you can really develop an established routine or discipline in your life. Start it tomorrow and start it this way. Say, God, I have heard you in my heart and you said, come and talk to me. Now I'm just going to spend some time talking to the Lord. And I'm just going to tell him how much I love him and appreciate him. And I'm going to tell him how blessed I am. And I'm just going to pour out my love to the Father. And I may not ask for anything this morning. But guess what? As he walks with you through that day, he will supply all your needs. I love that. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. Listen. Listen. Being beckoned by God, drawn by God, is not like being called to the principal's office, okay? I think some of us have the impression, God, again, that that oppressive big guy up there with the white beard. No, no, God says, just come. I desire fellowship. I desire to hear your voice. Do you know when you look at creation, God puts man and woman, Adam and Eve, in that garden, and we see so clearly that God initiates a time where he would walk in the cool of the day and just hang out, spending time. The reason he created us was for fellowship. Now that should be an awakening. When you think of your relationship to God and you realize he made you for fellowship and fellowship is done through prayer. Let me mention this. 
Prayer is not just about asking God for blessings, although we can and we should ask him for things we need. We'll find out about that next week as well in more detail. But it is fellowship with the living God. Now, I got, I got thinking about our tendency to make our prayer time, because I have been there more than once in my life where I had to catch myself. I felt like every time I was praying, I was just asking for stuff, even good stuff, but I'm just asking God. And eventually, again, as the relationship matures, You realize that's a component, but that can't be the central point. Now think about it, you parents. If the only time your child talked to you was when he wanted something. Dad, you got 10 bucks. You give him 10 bucks, and he doesn't talk to you again till tomorrow when he needs 10 bucks again. Dad, can you give me the keys to the car? Debbie and I only have one child. Many of you have met Amanda. She's away for a couple of weekends, but God willing, she will be back. And Amanda just had this innate part of her personality where she can be very persistent. <laughs> yeah, she's not here tonight, so I'm really going to have fun with this. <laughs> and nobody tell her, and it's not going to be posted on YouTube, okay? Just kidding. So... When Amanda was about six years old, I don't know how, but she got it in her mind that she wanted a puppy. More than anything in her life, she wanted a puppy. You're six. How do you know this? None of your friends have puppies. There's no puppies in our part of the neighborhood. How did she know? I have no idea. But my daughter, being who she is, a lot like her mama, began a relentless campaign To wear me down. (laughs) Love you, babe. We both know Amanda gets that from me, not from Deb. A relentless campaign at six. I would go away on business trips at the time. I was traveling all around North America for a corporate job. And every time I'd go somewhere, I'd have to get her a stuffed animal from someplace. Sometimes it was in the airport. There'd be a Disney store. Remember those? And they had just really cool things. And I would bring her back stuffed animals. We've got hefty bags filled with stuffed animals in our basement to this day to prove it. But I can remember when she was about six and a half and she was midway through this campaign for a puppy. And I came home from a trip and I'm doing this whole routine. I got something behind my back. I said, Amanda, I got something for you. She said, is it a puppy? (laughs) No, it's a mini mouse. But dad, I want a puppy. Yes, I know. I heard you a thousand times before. Dad, can I have a puppy? No, Amanda, it's just not a good time right now. We'll think about it. And you know how how that goes with a kid, right? Yeah, don't tell him that because the next two minutes, have you thought about it? What do you think? So when Amanda was about seven, she kicked up this campaign to now include, I'm not making this up, written notes left all over the house. (laughs) It's true. It's true. Now, you remember last week, those of you that were here, when I said I'm a sentimental pack rat? You guys remember that? Do you know I found one of those notes this week? Would you like to see it? This is actually one of her notes that she wrote me at probably about six and a half, seven years of age. Now, in case you don't read six-year-old, here is the translation. Amanda wants a puppy. Let me repeat that last part. A puppy. (laughs) <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so glad I saved this one so of course I couldn't stand it anymore and we relented and Amanda got her puppy alright I know I know right now I don't know if you can prove biblically that dogs go to heaven but if they do this one's with St. Peter right now Because this dog has since passed away, and it was the greatest, the best dog ever known to man. But my point is this. My conversations with Amanda at six and seven had to do with what she wanted, and relentlessly so. But now I love the fact that we enjoy, we can talk about all kinds of things. We can share music together. We can ride in the car and and just have a good time on so many levels. Why? Because a healthy relationship has to go beyond just saying, Daddy, I need this. I want this. You're a good, good father. You wouldn't withhold that job from me. Can you please, can I please have it? Can I, can I, can I, can I please? 
it has to be balanced. God, I love you. My heart hears you say, talk to me. And we express that part of our relationship with him. And then the other components of communication come into play. And let me wrap this thing up. If you've been around the haven any length of time, you may have even seen, uh, we have a banner like this in the, in the hospitality hub. But this is basically the blueprint for the haven church. We've had this since day one, 27 months ago. When we first started, we said, what do we want to be like? Well, how about we try to pattern ourselves from the first church, the one in the book of Acts, of which we are still a part. And so we took Acts 2, verses 42 to 47, we listed those components, and then we claimed the promise and God's part at the end. And as we've been faithful, I can tell you God's been faithful. But if you will notice, right there in the middle, smack dab in the middle, is prayer. Now, those of you that haven't been with us all this time, let me just tell you, before there was a Haven Church, there was a prayer meeting. Matter of fact, there was about 10 prayer meetings. We didn't know there'd be a church. Debbie and I just knew God was stirring something. We called friends to our house. We ended up just praying, and I played some worship music. It was not a church. There was no name. There was no offering. There was nothing but prayer. It's how this church that you're sitting in was born. And so it remains a key component of the ground floor of what you are a part of. And so it must be part of your foundation with God. We pray before every service. We gather and we pray before every service, before you ever walk in these doors. There is prayer that takes place all throughout the week. And let me just tell you something else. I can't wait till God opens the door for our own facility and I can say, church, how about this Tuesday night we all gather at our church and we have some prayer together. I can't wait for that. I can't wait till I can say, listen, on Thursday, the doors are going to be open at 7. Just come. We're going to just have music playing and we're just going to pray. We're going to enjoy his presence. I got goosebumps just talking to you about it because it's coming and it's going to be wonderful. Amen. 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 Let me wrap up with this. God is the one who reached out first. And God still reaches out first tonight. God is the one that is talking and drawing and stirring tonight. I'm just the vessel speaking what I felt he put in my heart. But it's, it's him who's reaching out to touch your heart tonight. You see, God knows if you and I will grasp more of the joys of prayer in terms of that communication and relationship, God knows it's going to bring you a life of peace and blessing and fruitfulness and power. That's what's coming, and that's what he wants for you, and that's why he's reaching out tonight. I love this verse in Revelation 3.20 that again shows us how, how much of a desire God has for fellowship with us. Jesus is saying in Revelation 3.20, behold or look out or pay attention. I, God, stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. He's knocking. He's knocking right now. God is knocking on the the door of your heart. He says, if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and share a meal together with you as what? As friends. You see, this is all connected to the nature of our God. It is a desire for fellowship. It is a desire for you and I to willingly say, come on in. Get closer. Draw me closer to you. Would you guys bow your heads for a minute? Let me, just, let me just talk to you for a minute. So while we're talking about prayer and while we're challenging and hopefully inspiring you to see prayer as not an obligation or routine or words to say, but a communication with Almighty God. While we're doing that, 
There are some of us in the room, God is absolutely knocking on the door of your heart. Now, for some of us, he's saying, let me in. we got to get closer. He's saying, you love me, and you've expressed that, and I, I've redeemed you, I've saved you, but we got to get closer. For some of us, God is saying tonight, there's been some neglect. But I'm standing right now at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. I'm saying, listen, God is saying, there is a greater dimension of this relationship. It will not be such an obligatory one that, that feels so much like a burden. It will become a joy. For some of us, that's hard to imagine, but God tonight is knocking on your door. And I believe in this house. There are some of us that need to get a little closer and we need to just acknowledge, Lord, I am opening my door to my heart. Say, I already love you, God. I love you. You're my Savior and Lord, but I'm opening the door for you to come in and for us to get closer. Anybody in the house tonight, you just want to acknowledge God is knocking on your door tonight. He's knocking on your heart. I see it around this room. Yes, I see it. I see it. Yeah, me too. Me too, as I was preparing. I said, God, I, I feel you. You're pounding on my door. You're saying, I just want to get in a little closer. I just want you to invite me in. And we're going to be closer friends. And we're going to break a meal, bread together and have a meal. And it is going to be greater joy than you know. Father, for those tonight who lifted their hands, will you just overwhelm them with a sense of your Holy Spirit right now? that you are a God of love and your desire tonight is to erase any distance and to draw us so close to your heart. And in that, Father, I pray that these who have raised their hands and those that wanted to were intimidated, God, that they would sense tonight that, that there is going to be breakthroughs coming and there is going to be greater depths of their walk coming as they draw closer to you. You said, when we make the first move, you just overwhelm us with your presence. So do that for these individuals tonight in this house, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, there may be others in the room tonight that you're feeling a knock on the door of your heart, that the Holy Spirit is absolutely tapping gently. He won't break it down. He'll just ask you, will you open the door and let me come in? Maybe you're in the house tonight and you have never committed your heart to God through Jesus Christ. You've never asked him in as your personal Lord and Savior. Right now, he's knocking on the door of your heart. I will not embarrass you. I will not call you out, but I want to pray with you. If you're in the house tonight and that's you, just raise your hand. Anywhere in this crowd of people, anywhere in this crowd of people, you want to say, Lord, I want to receive you as my personal Lord and Savior right now in this house. Lift that hand up. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Church, I'm going to say a prayer, and I'd like you all to repeat it with me so that those that raised their hands would not feel embarrassed, and yet they would still be able to freely repeat it. Would everyone please repeat this after me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your love. And I thank you for knocking on my heart's door. Now, Father, I accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. And Lord, give me the strength, God, to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, somebody rejoice. Come on, somebody rejoice. Come on, somebody in this house rejoice. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, hallelujah. God is faithful to his word. Where's my band tonight? Where's my singers tonight? Let's end this thing rejoicing. Come on, let's sing about God's grace one more time before we go.
Let's fellowship in the hospitality hub. I love you guys.